Well, none of you are shooting at me, so that's a good start. You see, I used to have a dangerous job in a very dangerous place where people killed people every damn day with AK-47s and sniper rifles, small roadside bombs, huge truck bombs, even the occasional artillery shell the size of a Volkswagen for years. That's what one truck bomb did near my house one morning. And despite many of my colleagues and friends not making it out, I'm very happy to be here with you today. Because I want to share with you what saved my life, since it could very well help you too. And that's tradecraft, or more specifically, defensive tradecraft, and a little luck saved my life. Now, tradecraft means different things to different people. For me, it was really just the tools and techniques used in intelligence work. Stuff like surveillance, secret messaging, hiding in plain sight, normal stuff, you know, if you're in that line of work. <laughs> now, defensive tradecraft is simply using that same stuff in reverse to try and stay safe like avoiding cameras, by like creating plausible vignettes, like a well-timed sneeze or a circuitous route. Now, to me, living in a war zone, Tradecraft was taking a different route to work every day, even after I knew the shortest roads. That meant getting stuck in traffic, going miles out of the way on purpose. Now, why would a sane person do that? Because my friend was in that car that exact car. Tradecraft meant suspecting everyone, everything, everywhere, all the time, in the shops, on the streets, in a bar. How could that person hurt me? What could they be after? Who do they really work for? What was their motivation? Let me tell you, this does not make you an easy person to be friends with. <laughs> and yet, it saved my life. And it saves the lives of thousands of operators around the world every day. I'm very thankful for the tradecraft training that I received. But when I eventually moved back to the States, it took me years to unlearn that tradecraft. I would still vary my routes to the grocery store. I'd run background checks on dates. <laughs> I'd ignore unexpected visitors. I'd never sign up for discount clubs or frequent flyer miles that could track me. But there was no longer any threat. What I was doing seemed silly and paranoid, but it was just that ingrained in me. So finally, over a long time, I started taking the shortest route to work and even started to collect frequent flyer miles. I slowly became normal. Now, however, the old kinetic threats are well behind me, but a new wave of internet-based threats are upon us all. And I find myself sliding back into a world of modified defensive tradecraft to protect me, my ventures, my community. The threats are everywhere, and they're increasingly successful. Transnational criminal gangs hunt people and companies, not to physically hurt them anymore, but to steal their money or their secrets, to disrupt their operations, sometimes even destroy entire companies. Foreign intelligence services have now aggressive programs in place that go well beyond government to government, and they target individuals like you and me, and all the companies that make up that civilized world's critical infrastructure. So if you work in the transportation sector, you're a target. If you work in banking or energy or healthcare, you're a target. There are actually 18 critical sectors worldwide, and all of the companies and all of their employees are now targets. These threats might start with you, spread across your company, across your entire industry, and ultimately disrupt our very way of life. In your world today, your risk is my risk. Now, they don't use bombs and guns as much as emails and websites. But now, so much of our lives are online, the threats are just as real. 
But quite frankly, companies have had enough, and they're willing to trade some of that openness for increased security. Companies and governments around the world are adopting something called the zero trust model, where your systems only do the expected things and nothing else. Now I know this runs counter to the whole concept of the open internet, where you can connect to everything and do anything. But companies are making that trade-off due to the high level of attacks on their systems, their data, their personnel, their privacy. So I ask, are you ready to make that same trade-off? Has your threat level risen to the point of making the tradecraft trade-off? How much do you worry about your identity being co-opted, or your private thoughts being laid bare, or your reputation be smirched, your money being stolen. Just as companies are moving to zero trust, the same concepts can hold true for your personal life online. If an input's not expected, be it an email, an invite, a pretty picture, a text, a video, just skip it. Don't click it. Sure, you'll miss something, maybe something really good, but you will be safer. And that doesn't mean you have to be an online hermit. I still have email, I still surf the web, I still use social media, but I use it with defensive tradecraft in mind. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll see I tweet about where I've just been, rather than where I'm about to go. This reduces my risks and still lets me share. Trade Tradecraft can really help you to, because it can stand, if you can stand the embarrassment, because you'll have to suspect everyone and trust no one. And you're going to be wrong most of the time, and that's all right. And your friends are going to think you're crazy, but that's all right, because you'll be safer. Are you all right with that Tradecraft trade-off? Because it's certainly not for everyone, but it might be for you, or you, or you. I've had invites on LinkedIn that turned out to be a team of foreign intelligence operatives. Because of Tradecraft, I declined, but I did notice that after a couple of weeks, they had over a dozen friends that I knew to hold sensitive jobs. Now that's just a simple example, and I'm sure you probably see this stuff all the time. That email from your bank, who got that? That website that says you won, that link that says you've been randomly selected. The thumb drive you found, or the free Wi-Fi that's being graciously offered. If you're getting anything for free, anything, be it a search or a service, an app or a game, you've got to ask yourself, what could they be after? Who do they really work for? What's their motivation? The same things I was taught. Suspect everyone and trust no one. All the time, in your phone, on the web, in the cloud, suspect everyone and trust no one. So let me close my three rules of practical defensive tradecraft for your life online. Rule number one is zero trust your life. Just like the companies and governments are doing. Now this isn't hard, but it will absolutely subject you to ridicule, ribbing from your friends, your family. Why didn't you retweet me? Why didn't you watch that funny cat video I sent? Why didn't you tell me you were in town? I get that all the time. You have to ignore the unexpected. You get lots of messages across lots of platforms. But if it's a bot, a crook, or a casual troll, they tend to move on after a few times. You can then start to extend some trust to your friends and family, but never fully trust anyone. Rule number two, reduce your attack surface. Don't be a joiner. These apps that you download, they get to track your every movement, down to which hand you're holding your phone in, which room, side of the room you're on, uh, what you're watching on TV, what you're watching on the internet, what you're searching for, what your eye looks at on, on the screen, what your cursor lingers over at a link that you'd never ever click. All that gets tracked. Where you drive, what you buy. Now maybe you want to trade all that privacy away. And that's fine, but think about the real costs versus what you're getting in return. And rule number three, change your identities. Emails are cheap these days, and having multiple email addresses really helps you have multiple online personalities. 
One for buying stuff, another for playing games, a third for social media, one for family, one for business. You get the picture. And since your passwords have already been long gone and are already sold on the dark web to the highest bidder or lowest bidder, for critical systems such as banking and healthcare and work, consider changing your identification process beyond a password to a passphrase. You know, a few words that you'll remember cobbled together or moving to two-factor authentication with your phone or biometrics with your face or your thumbprint. This extra hassle for you makes it so much harder for them. But tradecraft is not for everyone, and I'm by no means implying it's advocating it for all. But if you are tired of being threatened, whether kinetic or cyber, you don't want to be a flashpoint for your company, your industry, your society as a whole, you might want to consider employing some defensive tradecraft. Tradecraft's not for everyone, but in the end, it might be for you. And I just want you to have the option to be a little bit safer. Thank you.